Okay, welcome everybody. Chris Petrie, thanks for coming by. Again, we're having another wonderful time here doing some beautiful uh, flower paintings. We're doing some purple wildflowers, having a great time. We're going over all the processes and uh, methods and procedures uh, to get this done. Let's um, just take a look at the flower painting here. This is the finished painting. This is the sen uh, second painting I actually did. We did one painting first and we said that we wanted to make some changes to it. And so throughout the video, you'll see how we discussed and went over how you can change your painting as you go, or you can paint your painting the first time and then readjust it a second time and paint it a second time after that so that you can kind of, once you draw and paint it the first time, you'll learn a few things, you'll see a few things you might not have seen when you were starting out, and then you can turn around and change it, create another painting, a second painting, pretty much identical to the first one, but you have made a few changes to it. So that's what we did here. This is the second painting that I did off camera, but you'll see the first painting all the way through each step of the way. The only thing is we changed a little bit here on my final painting, which I did here a second painting. So it'll all make sense if you watch the video. I know it sounds a little bit uh, confusing right now, but trust me, you'll have a fun time. It's not a long video. It's a real fun, quick video doing some beautiful purple wildflowers. And again, let me zoom in here a little bit. And those are the flowers there. And a very simple color scheme, just a few colors, purple, blue, some greens and a little bit of raw umber and you're all set. So you're only using a limited palette here. You'll have a lot of fun, enjoy it. And uh, we'll be, get right into it just in a second. We'll start up in uh, about uh, two minutes and two seconds. All right. Hey, it's Chris Petri here and we're getting back into some paintings of flowers. Let's have some fun. We're painting wildflowers here. And as you can see, we have a really nice uh, uh, picture, photograph. We got this online. So I just went on, on the uh, internet on my phone and I looked up wildflowers and then I, you know, looked at the images that were online and I found some really cool looking uh, wildflowers here, purple. They look really nice. We'll do, we'll do these. You saw the finished painting just a second ago, of course. And so that, that's all I really did was do, I did a search and then I just saved it to my phone so that I can save it for future reference if I want. And, and, and then I just, uh, I'm, we're gonna work from this, that's all. So we'll work right from this image here. You can actually do a, um, you could do, you know, you could pause the video, you could work from my finished painting, however you wanna do it. I'll zoom in. So you can kind of see a close up of the uh, wildflowers there. You might be able to stop the video and take a picture of it. I leave all the technical stuff up to you, how you want to do it with your phones, your internet, but this is a great way to work because you have endless information you can work from the internet and have so much resources for pictures and images of anything you can imagine. You just type in any subject matter, you know, uh, trees, flowers, ocean, sky, clouds, anything, you name it, you type it into the internet, it just gives you, you know, literally thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures. So I did wildflowers and I found a photo of a wildflower that I thought looked really good. So I hope you're gonna like this and uh, we are gonna get started. So let's zoom back out here, like so. And then I'm gonna set this across from me, directly straight across from me like this. I just lean it up against a, a book that I have against the wall here. I'm set up in my studio, so I have a nice uh, setup where I can lean stuff up against the wall over here in front of me. And um, we have our Fabriano Artistico extra white paper. So I just put that on here with a couple pieces of tape on the corners. Maybe we'll make a little square around this here. You can do this. You can tape all the way around the paper too if you want. There we go. And next what I'll do is I'm going to do a very light preliminary sketch and we, we talk about this all the time doing a preliminary sketch. And the reason for the preliminary sketch is it's super light and you're just kind of going around silhouetting what you're going to do. The, 
uh, the first time really lightly so you can kind of get it set up on your, your picture, on your uh, rectangle that you have set up or your square, your, your picture frame so to speak. So, okay, let's do it. So I'm going to do a super light sketch here. So you can probably might not be able to see it. Hopefully you can see this. So I'm going to do this. Okay, you might not be able to see that. We're going to go over this darker in just a second. I just want to get it somewhat in the proper spot that I need it. Okay, then we have this here. This is... Okay. We're not going to get into too much detail, actually. We're going to do this pretty abstractly. So, Then we have another flower over here that's sort of on the side. Like that. Then we have another stem, like so. Pretty close to here. Then we go up here. I'm going to look for my eraser here. I made this a little bit too long there. Like that. Okay, so I did a preliminary sketch just to get things laid out correctly. I'm not going to paint in any of the grass or trees behind this scene, like all that green that we saw. So you see all this green in the background. I'm not going to paint that. We're just going to paint this these purple flowers here on the white paper and we're going to leave it at that. It'll be fresh, it'll look great, and we're just again keeping it simple. A nice quick composition of some flowers and I think you're really going to have fun doing this. So we're going to continue on. Um, I'm going to take a quick break here. We did a little bit of preliminary sketching. Um, you probably, if I turn down this uh, light a little bit, I dim this down, you might be able to see the preliminary sketch a little better. Okay, so you can probably see that better. So the preliminary sketch, again, just a light rendering of what you're going to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it exactly the shapes that you need. You just have to have it approximately the same shapes in your picture frame that you want it. What this will keep you, what this will do for you is it'll, this will keep you from having an issue. And let me get some scrap paper and I'll just show you quickly. find some scrap paper. Bear with me, please. There we go. Okay. Scrap paper. This will keep you from having an issue with this problem, which is sometimes, and I've done this many, many times, when, years ago when I first started painting and drawing, we have our rectangle, right? Then we say we're going to draw, let's say we're going to draw our flowers in here. Next thing you know, we draw our flowers and it happens like this. We draw the flowers like this.
and all of a sudden this happens. We draw it way smaller and we forgot that we wanted to fill up our whole rectangle with these flowers. So what the preliminary sketch does is, you know, you start, you start your preliminary sketch very lightly, of course, this is dark just because I'm trying to make, you know, show a little example here, but you start to get the feel for the, the flower there and then up here. And then the next thing you know, perfect, you have the whole rectangle full of subject matter, your flowers, that's what you want. You want to fill up that whole rectangle or that whole square of your watercolor paper with your flowers. So that preliminary sketch is your way of saying, let me go and do a dry run for a super light. And then if you have to redraw it over the top, you can do that. You're never going to see that light sketch. You know what I'm saying? Because when you draw super light sketches on watercolor paper, you're never going to see that. If you do light sketches on watercolor paper, once you start painting, you're never going to see those light lines with the pencil. So you can draw it really lightly first. And if you say, oh, I forgot to make it bigger, no problem. You just maybe start again and then make your leave your pencil drawing on there the first one you did your first preliminary sketch you leave that on there and then you just go over your second time leaving the first sketch you did maybe the flower is a little smaller and you just remember to make them larger and then you get that feel for okay now I've gotten the flowers the size I need them with that super light pencil sketch where you're barely touching the paper then once that's done then we're gonna go over and do a darker uh, drawing over this, a contour drawing. So the contour drawings next, we're going to go over with that darker pencil line over the top of this. And that's just, I wanted to really, really make that clear. That first light pencil lines that you do is just so you kind of get your subject matter on that paper right where you want it. And then if you have to go and do a second preliminary sketch over the top of that, that's fine. Then you're ready. Then you go on top of the third, and then you go over for your third time you're going over with your final pencil drawing. And again, you won't see these light lines when you start painting. Or you might like them there too. I, I like them. I, love, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy tremendously seeing pencil lines on my watercolor paper when I'm painting and finished with my watercolor painting. So I hope you like them too. And we're going to see how that looks in just a second. Let's just take a quick break, okay? And I always remember to mention to you, please subscribe. On the right-hand side over here on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a subscribe button. That's uh, the YouTube subscribe button. What that does is it just alerts you each time our new videos come out so you don't miss them. I don't want you to miss any videos. No matter what we're painting, flowers, oceans, trees, buildings, cityscapes, landscapes, figures, whatever we're doing, I want you to watch every video so you'll keep learning all the techniques over and over and you learn all the names of the paint colors. The more you hear all of these things that we're covering here, it'll be locked in your mind and you'll have it memorized. And once you have everything memorized, that's the least of your worries then. Then it's all memorized and you don't even think about it. And then you're thinking about more critical, important things in your artwork. So I always remember uh, to say to you, please subscribe and keep remembering to watch all the videos. Even if you don't like flowers, maybe next time you're going to like seascapes or landscapes or whatever we're doing. But if you watch the videos, again, no matter what the subject matter is, you're going to learn a lot of information. And I want you to lock that into your, your mind. And uh, this way you, you're uh, prepped uh, each time you paint, you're going to have more success with your paintings. So we'll see you in just a second. Okay, we just took a break and now we're back. Let's get started. Again, now we're going to do our contour drawing, which is basically over the top of our preliminary sketch. So basically our preliminary sketch is going to kind of just be our under under a drawing to kind of just give us a guide of where we kind of have to be with our uh, contour drawing, which is our final drawing with our pencil. So I'm going to take my uh, pencil here. This is a, a retractable pencil. It's a number 9, point, uh, point 0.9 millimeter, uh, and it's a softer, um, probably like a medium uh, lead pencil. Uh, the, the, uh, it's, uh, I think they're um, HB leads for the uh, for the lead for the retractable pencil. So we'll start out here. And I'm going to just look at my drawing as I go. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to 
come back down there, go up here. And I'm just going to try to capture the nice flow of these flowers. And again, you can kind of see, I'll turn up the, the lighting a little bit here. And then we see that there it comes up here. And again, let's do this free. Let's have a good time with this. I'm not going to get into every detail of the flowers and, you know, suffer over the little um, shadows and lines in the flower. I'm just going to try to get the overall shape. That looks pretty good. And then over here we have another flower that was kind of in a profile type um, look. So we'll do that. And then we have like that. And then we have another stem. So we're going to do our other stem here. And then that stem goes right through here and like so. And then we're going to do this here. And this is more of a round shape over here. And then another round shape here. Kind of like an, uh, like an uh, oval, roundish oval type shape there. And this one over here. And then in the center we have the small portion of the small portion of the flower here in the center. Now what we can do is we can make a decision and say, you know what, let's leave these really simple. I'm not going to get too carried away with the real details of this. So let's just leave it more abstract. I'm not going to get into all the small lines of the flowers, you know, there's these small, very fine lines. I'm not going to worry about that. Let's just get this real simple. Okay, so we're, we're pretty much ready to paint at this point. So let's start out. Let's get a round brush. And we want purple. Look at that. Straight tube paint. You have to have nice, I always say this, you have to have nice, soft, moist paint uh, when you're painting this type of painting. Actually, with all my paintings, I'm always using soy, uh, soft, moist, juicy paints. And I have many videos, if you look up, if you just type in my name into YouTube, you type in uh, into the YouTube search bar, Chris, C-H-R-A-S, space, P-E-T-R-I, space, and you type in palette, P-A-L-E, T T E. If you type in that, Chris Petri palette, at least five to ten videos will come up and it'll show you all the ways that I set up my palette, all the tips and little tidbits of tricks I do to keep my paint, you know, paints moist. And it's really pretty simple. I want you to go to those videos and check them out. It'll explain everything. So we don't have to spend the time here right now. We're doing the flower painting. I don't want to sit here and go into 10, 15 minutes of how I keep my paints moist. Check out my other videos on my palette. Just type in again, Chris Petri palette or paints, Chris Petri paints, and you'll see them. They're there. They come right up on the YouTube search. Fantastic. All right. Away. Let's do it. Okay. Purple. That's what we wanted to keep this simple. Purple. Maybe a little bit of blue, cerulean blue over here. Maybe just a little bit of a, you know, variation there a little bit. And let's get started here. Okay, so you notice I have my lighter tonal values here, which is a little more water, not that much paint. And we can always put in more paint there to get a darker tonal value like that. See that? Now I get a little more paint. 
let's do this. Let's just start to get our paint on there. Look at that. Perfect. Then I keep a paper towel or a tissue handy to dry off some paint. I rinse off my brush, dry off some water, and then I dampen it out like so. Just like that. Then here I'm going to go with straight paint, no water. It's a little bit darker under here. Purple. Like that. Rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, pick up some of this. This is a little lighter, lift up some paint there. Then we can go with a little darker over here. There we go. Couple splashes. That looks good. Excellent. All right, let's get more paint. Let's do another flower up here. Maybe we'll pick up some blue up here. Put some blue in here too. We don't want to. That'll just give us a little variation there couple more splashes like that and this is really the simple I'm using a larger brush as you can see this is a pretty large brush this is a number 10 a Scott a Skoda number 10 Charles Reed this is a Charles Reed signature brush travel brush these are fantastic brushes top quality I use them all the time especially when I travel for vacation or if I'm going out and doing some plain air painting Great points on these. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of splashes to make interesting marks on the paper around the flowers. We don't just want nothing but white paper. We want to have that little bit of excitement. Then we're going to get some green. Let's get some sap green. We're going to do the stems now. Sap green, raw umber, I think that will look fine. Sap green and raw umber, just two colors. And I just use the very, very tippy point of the brush, like that. Maybe lighten up with a little more water, less paint. Then again, more water less water and more paint. Maybe a little bit of iridium there. Like that. Okay, then I rinse off the brush, dry the brush off on a paper towel, go back in. And there we go, we got the other stem there. And that's looking really great. Now this is where I might splash a little bit. Add a little bit of green to that, maybe. You know, you do the way you want. You create your paintings the way you want. You're the artist. I'm just trying to add a little more variation to the colors there. But, but I think that... And I just splash those into the flower. Maybe I'll add a little more dark. Dark here and there, just to... For that other flower that's over here. that. Now that flower in profile, you might want to leave that out. I kind of wish I left this out actually, now that I think about it. I put this in because I saw it in the picture and again we can refer uh, to the, we can refer, refer to our photograph. You can see how 
this this flower over here, this wildflower on the right hand side of this main flower is it looks you know okay but for this painting this would have looked better if I would have left that out and just left it the two flowers and then maybe I could have found a better photograph is what I'm saying I don't think this is the perfect photograph to use but that's what you have to figure out when you're an artist you have to figure out you have to really look at things very carefully and say is this gonna look good if I paint it draw and paint it and then also too you might say to yourself how might I change it a little bit to make it look even better so I might paint this this time the first time and you might do the same thing you might paint this one the first time and say okay on the next painting I'm gonna use this same picture this same photograph except except I'm gonna find another photograph that might have a flower that I could maybe put smaller under here and leave this one out so that because this kinda looks a little bit distracting on the right hand side over here but that's up to you so we could start another one but I think we'll leave it the way it is it's not you know we, we could improve upon it is what I'm saying so we'll leave this one as it is have a fun time with it I hope you're gonna have a great time trying this again I'm gonna splash a little more I can lift up the splashes too like so if you don't like as many splashes like so but I think overall this does look good we got really beautiful purple colors on our paper for the flowers we got the stems in nice and really looking good with the greens and a little bit of the raw umbers um, so I think this is again a fun painting to do and again we can always improve upon it so this is a learning lesson I like doing this with my videos where I create something and I can actually look at it and say I know I can improve upon it the next time and I hope you do the same thing with your artwork always try to think how can I make it better the next painting so you might try this one one or two or three times and then you know each time maybe say what can I maybe do to make it a little better or a little more interesting or you try something creative that you want to try for your um, painting so it's always fun to do that to kind of change things up change, rearrange things a little bit add something in take something out so in this case we would in the next painting we would take out this flower here on the right and again we can look at the photograph and we can see the photograph here we would take out this uh, these petals over here on this flower that are in profile and just remove those from the we wouldn't just draw it we would just leave it out and then when we go to paint we wouldn't even we wouldn't even consider it we wouldn't be painting it we'd only be painting the two major flowers and then we might make a smaller flower under here somewhere and we might even take something like using these two flowers draw a smaller flower using this same flower just make it smaller but use the same exact shape underneath it almost like you're taking this ex same exact shape just making it smaller and making it another one under here so that you have like maybe three flowers one two and three maybe it looks a little better than just two that third flower makes it a little more interesting and if it's a little smaller that's going to look a little better two larger flowers one smaller flower that might look really good again try it out experiment have fun with this and again this was a quick video hope you had fun with this i hope you'll um try different variations on this theme of flowers and how you can change and rearrange your flower shapes when you're painting them you can go online there's literally tens of thousands of flower pictures you can go online and find books magazines all that you know you can out outdoors outside of your house you might have gardens at your place or gardens nearby or people might have flowers planted near their houses in their homes their apartments you can look at those take pictures of them and paint them so really flowers are a fun thing you can do them and you have endless um, uh, subject matter to work from you can always just again take pictures outdoors look up stuff online on your phone your computer all of that it's just a fun thing I'm glad we had fun here together as we painted this scene and again thanks so much for coming by painting with us and for following my channel I really appreciate it and thanks for all the great comments and all the encouragement it keeps me stoked for painting and drawing and keep I love to keep coming back week after week here on YouTube and uh, having fun with us all of us here as we uh, paint and draw and watercolor okay so we'll see you on the next video uh, talk to you soon bye bye